Afternoon, YouTube. So today I'm going to be talking about a new product I just purchased, and there's a lot of uh, information on the web about this device. And some of you, uh, you know, might not know about all the different things it can do. Um, the device today is called the Google Chromecast, and this is the box right here. Um, this is what the device looks like. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you the actual device because it's plugged into the TV already. And what I want to be doing is just talking about a couple of things that this device can do, what it's capable of. Um, basically, for those of you who don't know, um, <clears throat> it's about the size of a, that's almost actual size there. It's about the size of a USB um, drive, you know, a standard size one, maybe a little larger. And what this is, this is basically a little device that connects to the web, the website, or to the, excuse me, to the, your Wi-Fi network. And allows you to use your device, such as an iPad mini or any Android or iOS operating system device, and also your computer, but I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, it allows you to actually control the device and play content on your TV. So what we have here is this device plugs into an HDMI port. It has a wire that allows you to plug it and power it with if you have an available USB port on the back of your TV. So you plug this into the HDMI port and then you plug the USB into this device and then into your uh, USB port on the TV. If you don't have an available USB port on the TV like me, it does come with a power adapter. You just plug it right into the wall. So what happens is once you plug it in, you will have to go, and I'm not going to see if I can find the app here. Um, this is, like I said, an iPad mini. You'll want to go and find the Chromecast. Whoops, that's not it. Try that again. The Chromecast app. See, there it is right there. And basically, what it does, you can see right here, living room Chromecast. That's what I've named this device. And I won't go through the whole setup. It's really easy once you get this thing, it, it walks you through. Basically, you plug it into your TV, you plug the power into it, you download this app right here, whether it be on Android or um, iOS. It basically will search for a Chromecast device, it finds it, then, of course, you um, trying to remember? Uh, basically, you configure it to connect to your home network, but you first connect to it with your device. Um, I believe you have to go into your Wi-Fi settings on this. Instead of connecting to your home network, you will connect to the Chromecast, configure it, then reconnect to your home network, and everything will connect together. So basically, once it's connected, this is this app only allows you to actually make any kind of changes, like name the Chromecast and the Wi-Fi connection. It doesn't really do anything else besides that. So if you get this device, you plug it in, you go through the process. Don't think that you're, something's wrong here if you can't like use these right here. I believe if you click them, it'll open up the app. This device is designed to work with apps who have already installed, um, for instance, Netflix is a, is a popular one on YouTube, as you can see right there. This one was one of the first um, apps that works with the Chromecast. Basically what happens is, once this is all installed and your apps have to be all up to date, which on most people's devices they are, I'll give you an example here. You can go ahead and let's start with YouTube, for instance, okay? So here's YouTube. I've already installed it. Whether you have Chromecast or not, this feature is already in the YouTube app. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. And I have, of course, my TV on right now, okay? Remember, the Chromecast is behind the TV, connected to the TV. It's connected to the network. We've already done that with the Chromecast app on this device. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and watch a video. So what we do is we browse like normal. And let's see if I can find, um, just for an example, let's see, we'll go to my playlist. I'm a big fan of the 69 Eyes. So here's a, a fantastic um, video that, you know, normally you'd have to watch this on your device if you you know if you, if you really want like like I said I'm a big fan of these guys um, if I wanted to watch this concert I have to do it on my my iPad which is pretty small or I, I could go into maybe a DVD player that has a YouTube app or whatnot but then I'm you know it's I mean you can do it that way but you know YouTube there's a lot of other apps that work with YouTube but just as an example we're gonna click this so it's doing it's loading so normally you just normally watch it like so once it loads up Okay, so let me turn down the volume a little here. Okay, so what you do now is, like I said, all these. Any YouTube video that you go to right now using a YouTube app will have this little icon right up in the top here. 
See that little one right here? Looks like a little TV with a little Wi-Fi signal next to it. You're going to click that. Sorry about my, my video footage here. You click that. Now it's going to bring up any available Chromecast that you have. There's mine, living room Chromecast. Going to go ahead and click that. And what it's going to do, it just basically communicated with the Chromecast in the back of the TV where to find that content on the web. Now it's going to play it. Watch as it loads up. So there you have it. Now we're playing here. I have it hooked up to my receiver and all that stuff, you know, like most people. So there you go. So now anything you can get on the internet, on YouTube, you can watch right on your TV without having to drag out any kind of wires, use another device or, you know, I don't know like a DVD player or use a little, little tiny remote that came with the DVD player to pay in the butt. Um, this is really easy. The nice thing about this too is you're not using your resources of your device when using the Chromecast. All you're doing is using this as a remote control. All you've done is told your Chromecast what you want to watch and it found the content. It's using its own resources to stream this, not your device. So now you can go ahead, go back to doing what you're doing on something else. You want to get on Facebook or do whatever, you can do that. So that's one really neat feature. There's a lot of content on YouTube, as most people know, and uh, it's really great to be able to watch it now on your on your TV. If you want to go back and say, oh, well, shoot, I want to pause this, you pause it like normal, and it'll pause on the TV. You want to play it again, you play it. Oops. There we go. Also, a lot of the features that you normally would use on this also work with the Chromecast, um, like Advance, of course. Um, it's kind of neat too if you're having like your buddies or or something you want to have like a store your get your playlist uploaded on YouTube with all kinds of songs stream it to your Chromecast it's playing in the background it's a pretty fantastic device so that's just one of the app uh, the apps that is what I call Chromecast compatible and as time goes on there's going to be more and more apps that become available so that's a big one okay so let's say we're tired of this another really great app of course is the Netflix app which works the same way. And I'm not going to go ahead and pull that up. It's the exact same process. You open up your Netflix. You choose the movie you want. You stream it to this first. Then you go ahead and hit that little icon, that little TV with the what looks like a little Wi-Fi signal. Press that. It'll play on your TV. Now, another really great app that this thing has, which is one of the main reasons why I got it and one of the main reasons why I'm going to get another Chromecast for my bedroom and probably another one for my office, is what's called Google Play Music. And there it is right there. And what this is, is this is an app that you download to either iOS. They just came out with it last month, I believe, for, um, for iOS. It was um, Android before that. And I used it before the Chromecast. What it does is allows you to download the Google uh, Play Music app to your com or program to your computer. Okay, and I'm going to take you on a little trip here. So let's go ahead and check that out. So my computer is upstairs in my office. So we're going to run up here. All right. I'm not going to show you around because it's my home. So so here we go. So here's my desktop in my office upstairs. This is what the little app looks like, or excuse me, the program once you download it. And what you do, I opened it up. You install it. You choose what folder you want to monitor. So now anytime that you go ahead and get your favorite CD and you rip music to your computer in an MP3 format, you know, so you can you know have it di digitally, this program always runs in the bathroom. It's not really resource hungry. Again, I am running a, a, a quad core 8 gig RAM computer here. Uh, I haven't tested this, this program on a slower computer, but most people have fast computers now anyways. So anyway, this thing monitors. I chose full albums because I didn't want to have a bunch of kind of mix match songs anywhere. I wanted just, just my, my best stuff, full albums that I actually own and ripped. And what happens is anytime that I rip a new CD, this program, as long as I put it within full albums, this program knows what's in that actual album. And what it does, it sort of syncs it. And it uploads automatically in the background to Google Play. And so we'll go there right now. And I'll show you what it looks like. You just type in Google. Whoops. Google Play. Now, Google Play does a lot of things, too. You can buy music from them. They have the books. But this is the Google Play website, basically where you get a lot of your all your Android apps from. Um, so there we go, and then we got music. 
we click my music. This is now I'm on my computer, remember. So whoops, click my my music. And this is gonna pull up every song or every album that I have uploaded using the you know using that the program that runs in the background. If it loads here. I think I might have to reboot here. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So it's loading music library. This is where you can go in, you can delete music if you you know uh, you find you don't want to keep it uploaded anymore. Um, what this does is Google Play gives you on a free account 20,000 songs of your own you can upload. And what it does is it keeps your music, a copy of your music, securely in the cloud and allows you to use any Google Music app on Android or iOS. This thing ever loads. Let's go back. It's running a little slow. I have a pretty slow internet connection. Uh, the faster your connection, the better you're off. I unfortunately have CenturyLink. So anyway, you get the idea. It'll load up. It'll show every album, every song that I've uploaded. And I didn't have to do it. It automatically does it. Now, if you have a big collection, it might take you a week or so. Just let it do its thing. You'll be happy you did once it's all there in the cloud. So that's great. You can use your iPod. You can use your Samsung tablet to as a Walkman. and uh, Or, you know, I, I have Wi-Fi. I don't have a cell phone. But uh, if you did have a cell phone and you have an unlimited data plan, now all your music is in the cloud. You can stream it whenever you want it using the Google app. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back downstairs. Now I've already had that thing upload all my music over several weeks. And so let's go downstairs. So again, the Google Play, I used it a lot around the house. If I'm out in the garage, I would plug my iPod, use the app, stream my music into the garage through the stereo in there, and I always have it with me. Or if I'm at my folks' house, I want to play some music, plug it right in, you're good to go. Now, what I really liked about this, I had a problem, whereas I wanted to have my stereo down here be able to not only listen to, you know, um, my CDs that I have down here and my changer, but I wanted my full collection. Now, my computer's upstairs, so sure, I could get another computer down here. I can do the same thing, plug my iPod into it, but I want, I want something a little more easier that I could just sit back in the living room and pick the song I want, just like you do on your computer, and listen to what I want, when I want. So that's a great thing about this Google Chromecast. They've integrated the Google Play Store. So let's go ahead and open up the Google Music so you can see what it looks like. So you'll see it's loading my library. Let's do this first because I think we're... Oh, yeah, let's try it. Again, my connection's a little slow, so um, because we're already streaming a video, see YouTube is still playing on the Chromecast, it just takes a little bit to load. Okay, so here we go, it's loaded. The only problem with this app is you, you gotta use it in the, uh, the portrait, portrait mode. So, again, this is what the app looks like. These are, it automatically, for the most part, picks the uh, album cover of the, of the music you upload. It's not perfect. You can go in there and change them if it's made a mistake. It's pretty time consuming if you've had, you know, a lot of, like I have a lot of music uploaded here. I have a lot of CDs I purchased over the years. Um, so anyway, just for an example, you know, these are a couple that have loaded correctly. Uh, most of them will, but some of them won't. And if it bothers you, you can go in there. But what we're going to do now, if I want to listen to this song right here or this album, let's go ahead and hit Pink Floyd, okay? So we're just going to pick a song, Speak to Me. What it's going to do, it's going to stream that music from Google Play, because I've uploaded it. I don't know if you could hear that, but now it's playing on my iP iPad mini. And that'll work on any Android device, any iPod, because the app is available on both iOS and Android. So what we're going to do is, same exact thing we did before. Go ahead and click that Chromecast icon. Select Living Room Chromecast, and what it's going to do, now it's going to pull up, there's the Google Play, it's loading, it's telling the Chromecast where to get the song from my library, and you can see it right here, I don't know if you can hear that, but It is actually playing right now. There you go. So this is fantastic because now your entire library of music 
is wherever you plug in your Chromecast to. You want to take it with you, travel somewhere, you can do that. Um, now mind you, it comes through the TV, so for the real audiophile, um, there are better ways of doing this. The device actually supports full digital audio, full HD, or, uh, HD quality up to 1080p. I have an older TV, so I'm running 1080i. Of course, we're not watching anything now. So, for a second here, let's go ahead and pause this, okay? We're going to pause it. Let's go back to a different album. So, again, we can just go right back here. Let's say you get tired of listening to that. You got your music right here. All of it's right here. You don't, you don't have to go change CDs, nothing. So, let's just go ahead and, uh, I don't know, just, let's, let's pick something here. There we go. So there it is loading again. Loading a different song. There you go. Playing. So there is a slight delay on mine because as far as when you select it and when it actually plays because like I said I'm running a pretty uh, a 1.5 uh, megabytes a second internet. It's pretty slow in today's day and age. But you know the thing is, is when you're actually playing a whole album it'll play seamlessly like there won't be any delay. It won't have to, say, it won't have to show it's reloading or anything like that. And then, of course, it shows, in most cases, the album cover right on your TV. And it will go into a screensaver mode, too, so you're not going to burn in your TV like it just did. See that? Now, what I would recommend doing, and what I'll do eventually, I'm running, oh, as, as nice as my receiver is, and it's a really high-quality receiver, it is, um, does not support HDMI video or uh, audio or anything like that. So what I had to do here is I'm running analog, which for me, I mean, if you hear, if you heard my system, you'd be happy with it too. It sounds great. But if you're a real audiophile and you want to have that full digital quality, what you could do is I'm eventually going to upgrade that receiver to one with eight HDMI inputs, and that will, the TV will act as just a monitor. Right now, the Chromecast is sending that information from getting it from the web into the TV, of course showing the picture on the TV, and then the audio is coming out of the TV and then into my receiver analog. And that's the only way I was able to do it. But, I mean, for me, it sounds fantastic. And I've been into the audio thing for quite some time. I don't have a one vehicle without an impressive system, and every room in my house has a stereo. So I think most people would be happy with it. <clears throat> Again, if, if you're, what I'm going to do is eventually upgrade that receiver to one with Wi-Fi and everything like that, and I'm going to plug the Chromecast directly into the receiver and then pump the the, all the audio will work inside the receiver, so you won't even have to have the TV on anymore. Everything can be controlled anyway from the uh, from your, in my case, my iPad Mini. So with that plugged into the receiver, you'll leave the TV off. The audio will be in the receiver already. You won't need the TV unless you actually want to watch what's going on, you know, as a movie through Netflix or YouTube, or you want to watch the album cover like this in a song title, which I kind of like to do. Um, but it'll allow you to actually use this without actually having the TV on. All that digital audio quality will go right into the receiver, and then your digital video will go right into the TV because you'll be using it strictly as a monitor. You won't be passing through it anymore, not using a digital analog converter that's built into the TV. So that's just a, a really fantastic feature. And again, you can switch. You know, once I have a couple Chromecasts, I can select living room TV or I can select bedroom TV wherever I have the Chromecast. And you can, it's really great too because you can have one Chromecast doing one thing in one room. Let's say, you know, uh, buddies in the other room want to watch a movie. You can go ahead and put that right on. You don't, there's not, you don't have to have one Chromecast running off one device at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, it also does a few other things on the box here. Um, they have the, there's something in beta right now where there is the extension for Google Chrome. Okay, so let's go back on upstairs. And this is getting better and it works right now. For me, I don't really use it because my computer's upstairs and I haven't really found any content that I really, really want to watch so bad that I would have to, um, you know, run up here and turn this on. But just for argument's sake here, let's just say for some reason, let's say your laptop is downstairs. Whoops. Okay, let's say your laptop is downstairs or your computer's downstairs. And let's say there's something on YouTube, that you, or not YouTube, excuse me, there's something on the web. I haven't really messed around with it too much, so I'm just going to give you an example. Um, let's just use Google as an example as the web page. There is an extension that you download and built right into Google Chrome. You have to use the Google Chrome web browser, which I think most people do. It's a good web browser. It's right there. What I'll do is I'll click that. It's going to open up 
right there, see, see it says living room Chromecast, the big hush. That's showing me what's playing right now on my Chromecast downstairs. And if I want, I can click this button and it'll actually take whatever's on my desktop and put it downstairs in real time. Now again, it's just in, in the start of the testing. Um, it, it's not, it doesn't work perfectly. That's what they say. I've only used it a couple times and it works. And I'm not gonna click it now because we got a song playing downstairs and I wanna show you a couple other things. But that'll take whatever's on your computer and put it right in the TV downstairs. So if you did have, let's say, your laptop downstairs and you're, you're browsing through, you're looking at things and you're, you're you know, you want to go ahead and just, um, you blast that image right over to your TV, your buddies are watching, maybe a, maybe a football game or a clip from somewhere, maybe not YouTube, you can do that with this, okay? Um, the only problem is right now, the Google Chrome web browser for iOS and for Android does not support this feature on a mobile device. It has to be done on a computer. So it's, it's another feature that's there if you want it. Um, I'll use it eventually someday. I'm sure I'll find a, a reason to use it. So let's go back downstairs. Okay, so now we're back downstairs. Now there's more and more apps every day that are becoming uh, compatible with Chromecast. Let's exit out of here. The other one, and I'm not going to open it up because this video is coming to a close, but let's go under Entertainment, right here, HBO Go. HBO Go now supports Google Chromecast. So, and they don't, from what I've read, they don't mind if you share it. So basically, my family, they, they have a, uh, they pay for HBO, okay? And if one of your buddies pays for HBO, most people who have HBO don't really use their app to watch anything. And they don't really use, uh, you know, their, if you can watch it on your TV and you have HBO, why would you want to watch it on your iP iPad? Well, as long as you have the user login name from their uh their uh, cable provider, which you'll, you know, it's the same login as uh, you would use to, I guess, check your bill and whatnot. Well, my family shares that with me. I can go ahead and watch HBO Go and stream it right on my TV. So there's some shows that I, you know, don't get an opportunity. I haven't got an opportunity to watch. Now I can, as long as they pay for the, the HBO or you, or you know somebody who's willing to share their code with you. Um, and if you had, you know, your cable yourself, um, and for whatever reason, maybe you had a TV somewhere that. Well, I don't know, wasn't hooked up. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but um, you can stream HBO Go and all their content, which is really great. Also with this, I haven't messed around with it. One of the newest apps that they're going to be using or uh, that, that's available is Hulu. So if you have a Hulu account, you can stream everything just the way that I did with these other pro, these other apps right to your TV. And I don't have Hulu, so I've never messed around with it. I really use Netflix and YouTube the most and HBO Go now. And of course, the Google Play, that's the primary reason because I love listening to music downstairs. Um, the other one that they that I think is pretty interesting they came out with is it's called Plex Media Server, and what Plex is is actually it's a program just like um, you know the the uh, the, the uh, excuse me the Google Play app that runs in the background on your computer basically makes your computer a media server. And what that means is that whatever you have on your desktop on your computer, you know um, I don't have really a lot, but let's say I had a bunch of movies that I've ripped. Okay, and I'm starting to rip my movies and save them. Uh, but they take up a lot of room, and it's easy for me just to put a DVD in. But let's say you had a huge collection of digital content on your computer that you would like to watch on your big screen television. What Google Plex does, it runs in the background, it finds all media on your computer, and then what you do is you have an app on here, which I have the app, and we'll just open it up for, for the sake of opening it up. You do have to pay them monthly. I forget what it is. I believe it's under 10 bucks. And the free one doesn't allow you to stream content from your computer. However... If you are willing to pay the price, this is a fantastic interface to be able to um, transform your TV downstairs using your iPad or iOS device. You Again, using your computer because you'll be using this program with the Chromecast to stream content from your computer. Whereas right now, Google Chromecast does not have uh, that ability to do that without some kind of other program. It can't do it standalone. And I'm sure as time goes on, this becomes more and more popular. You're going to see other other players on the block there to be able to do that. But right now, um, if, see if I had this right now, it would show all my all my music. See, it says connect the Plex Media Server, or sign in. I signed out because I decided not to use it um, because I wasn't willing to pay the monthly fee for that. But that's another option for you. I believe there are a few more apps, but I just don't use them. And I like to keep checking and see what else is available. I think in time you're going to see uh, things like Facebook, and you're going to see. Uh, more and more, uh, more and more uh, um, uh, apps become uh, Chromecast compatible. But right now, I mean, that's quite a bit. The device only costs thirty-five dollars. With shipping, it comes to thirty-eight dollars to your door. 
and it's fantastic. I mean, it allows you to, to bring whatever content you want uh, right to your TV. And let's face it, most people have Netflix. Most most people use YouTube. And the Google Play is a big one. I don't think that that's a real feature that most people really know about or these things would probably be flying off the shelf even more than they already are. Uh, Google Play, upload your music. It's protected in the cloud. You can download it if you ever have a computer crash. I mean, it would take you a couple of weeks, of course, if you have a lot. But you can download your music back to your computer and it's safe. And it's a really easy way to bring your entire library wherever you go, especially if you have, you know, a cell, uh, if you have a cellular plan with unlimited data, you can stream that wherever you go. The other neat thing is that in my cars, I have a, uh, a head units in the cars that actually have Bluetooth. And again, I don't have a cell phone right now, but once I eventually do get one with a, with a, a data plan, I'll be able to take that phone, uh, connect it to my stereo via Bluetooth, and then stream my whole collection with me wherever I go in my car. So that's a really a really fa fantastic feature. Google Play, again, most people don't really know about it. I've never met anybody who many of my friends know about it. I'm sure you know it's kind of the same thing. So I would check it out. If you get one of these, definitely use that. Um, it's a fantastic feature. So that's my review of the Chromecast. It is, in my opinion, one of the best devices that, that has come out in quite some time. Uh, it's amazing how technology has changed so much over the last 10 years. I remember uh, using AOL dial-up and thinking how wonderful it was. And, and then when I discovered my first iPod Touch, I couldn't believe that it would connect to Wi-Fi. I mean, and just you can check your mail. It's 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 a, it really is an amazing time. But uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else to say about the Chromecast. I think I, I got everything. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory in the setup if you get one. But if you do have any kind of questions, I'll be more than happy to, to try to help you out and answer them for you. Um, that's my video. Um, email me or, or post on my site there to tell me if you what you think or, again, if you have any questions. Um, sorry to fumble. I'm not a professional here. <laughs> All right. Have a good day.